All right, so we can tell the man, DJ Craze, in the corner. He's a man of taste. He's a man of skill. He is, by the way, the only human to ever pull up at the DMC and win that thing three years in a row. Thank you very much. This is special this guy. cloth alert. Right. God damn. All right, and he's going to make some noise for you guys. Give it up for DJ Craze. Craze, Craze, A's, A's, A's. I'm one of the best in the world, man. One of the best DJs in the world, and you know it. like that. 
Bop it, bop it like, bop it, bop it, bop it like that. Bop it, bop it like, bop, 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 bop it like that. Bop it, bop it like, bop it, bop it, bop it like that. Bop it like, get down. Bop, bop, bop it like that. Bop it like that. Bop, bop, bop it, bop it, bop it, bop it like that. Bop it, bop it, bop it, bop it like that. Bop, bop, bop it, bop it, bop it like. Got the crowd screaming. Bop it, bop it like that. Bop it, bop, bop, bop it, bop it like that. Like that. Got the crowd screaming. DJ Chris is a bad motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Just so you guys know, that's actually what DJs are supposed to do. I know a lot of you spend money to go see these so-called DJs that stand there in big arenas like this and their arms are in the air. <laughs> they better be DJing with their dick right now. That's all I'm saying, because... If your arms are in the air, who the fuck is playing the music? <laughs> stand there making hand hearts. For me, first of all, dopeness is what I like the most. <laughs> dopeness. People who want to make things as dope as possible. Do this shit. Let me show you how to do this shit. I'm tired of the same old shit. This shit is discouraging. I don't even pay attention to this. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like none of these niggas. I don't even want to look like none of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Cool. So um, we, we went a little bit over time at this point already, but um, this is a big part of the show. So um, of course, I don't want to take away the option from you guys to ask some questions, uh, specifically to Craze. And if you guys want to think about that, because I know you guys are not so much into that, um, we got yes, Cut sir. Correct on the screen, and he's asking, what's your favorite scratch sample, aside from On Fresh? And uh, if you would have four hands, what would the performance look like or sound like? My favorite scratch sample. Um, if it's not On and Fresh, I like So Damn Tough. All right. Yeah, just because like, I remember hearing it on uh, my part of town. And like the way that that dude was cutting it, it sounded so fresh. So. So damn tough. If I would have four hands, my performance would be the shit. It would be amazing. Sorry for my Kanye moment. <laughs> All right. 
All right, Liam Cooper wants to know, do you feel it's necessary for DJs to essentially become producers in a sense to survive in today's turntablism industry? He put that in quotations. Mm. Well, if you don't want to become a producer, you shouldn't become a producer. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you want to be a DJ and that's all you want to do, then that's it. If you're trying to be successful in today's industry, uh, you're gonna do whatever it takes to be successful in the industry, but I mean, if you don't want to become a producer, or it's whatever you want to do, you gotta follow that. You know what I mean? Like, I never chased becoming a producer or anything else other than a badass turntablist, because <laughs> that's all I wanted to be. You know what I mean? So like, there was no okay, I'm gonna become a DJ and then I'm gonna get the money and then I'm gonna be successful in the industry and I don't, you know. Right, but you do produce, right? I do produce, but it's my main focus is my DJing. Yeah. But does it ever, does it ever, I guess that's what the guy is asking, like mm. does it ever feed into it? He's asking like, do you have to do it? But I guess that's nah, kind of a drastic yeah. way to yeah. say it. But it can. He says can to get... survive. Um, right. Nowadays, yeah, in the industry, you have to become a producer to make it. But, you know, I'll give a quick example. Um, I did New Slaves like almost two years ago, and I toured the rest of the year just because of that one routine. I didn't have no hit. I didn't have no big record on B-Port. <laughs> I didn't have anything. I toured the whole year off of something that I liked. You know? Well, you did kind of take the place of the one real DJ on the planet. So that's maybe <laughs> through the campaign Real DJing, we all like that that worked out really brilliantly. So I could yeah. I, I think you could almost say that it was a hit in a way. Because it, it made a great impact. You know? Yeah. But like still you didn't use, like, whatever you didn't you, use production you know, for that. Look at A Rap music, look at you know, look at people that just do something really well. Like you don't have to and the industry that we're in, which is like club industry, like what? I guess. Yeah, you just got to be unique and you got to be yourself and you got to do something that nobody else is doing. Everybody's a producer. Everybody's a DJ. How many of them are like really good? <laughs> you, know? you tell me. <laughs> so yeah, basically I'm telling Liam Cooper, you just do something that you like and be really good at it and you'll survive in the industry, I guess. <laughs> Am I making any sense? <laughs> kind of. Okay. I think so. We'll leave that up for Liam to decide. Um, and uh, if you guys have, have any more questions for Craze right now, Please. now is really the time Please. to keep going. Is there, is there one more in the stream? Any words of wisdom? In the middle. Advice for getting started to compete in DMC? Yeah, uh, just practice a lot. <laughs> practice a lot, be original, do you, and... Uh, Kick some ass. There's, there's maybe some things that I want to ask real quick. Like, how important yeah. is, um, is like trends to you? When, or when you were DJing, how important was like the actual scene at that given time? How important was that to you? And the second thing is, um, how important is, is fun inside of a performance for you? Versus being, like, how important is fun versus being the king? Like, how do you kind of bring these two things together to create your style, which is very entertaining? Uh, man, it gotta be fun. <laughs> if it's not fun, it gets stressful. So, yeah, it gotta be fun. And what was the first question? Um, does, it, does it have to, um, how important are um, like actual things that are happening? So let's say this one scratch is really big. How important is it to nail oh, yeah, that? Trends or stuff. like yeah, yeah, yeah. get your own shit? Get your own shit. Don't follow trends. Trends come and go. Like be your own person. Like. If everybody's doing this shit, try to go over there <laughs> and try to do you. That's what I, what I feel, what I, what I follow, because trends come and go. Like, your originality will always be there, so. Yeah. Is that almost like a formula, not like a formula to win? Like you say, if you do you, you're automatically gonna win, but isn't it like if you don't do you, you're definitely probably not gonna win, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's just like a rule of like life to me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta do you, be, be you, be original. Don't follow trends. And I mean, there's been many examples throughout my life of people who, who have followed the trends. My friends are just people that I see come and go, and it's because they don't, they don't stand, they don't, they don't stand out as somebody original. You know what I mean? So, 
and, and I see everybody who's original win. And they're always going to win. That's yeah, a, like a rule no of life. there's no competition, right? Because there's only one you. There's only one you. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we, had, we had someone in the middle. I think we, we have a mic for you. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there okay. Tell, tell Hi, the guy, Chris. Tell the guy to learn the S notation. No one's guaranteed. <laughs> well, Chris, <laughs> the yeah, yeah, you tell him right now. <laughs> Yo, the S notation is fucking dope. I'm not going to learn it, but it's dope. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fresh. Like he was saying, you got your own key. And yeah, man, that's fresh. Yeah, respect. Individual. So, I got two questions for you, Chris. Um, first question, do you and Clave have really been on mushrooms uh, while recording uh, scratch notes too? Nah, um, I did psychedelic. I mean... Psychedelics is what got me into turntablism. True story. I, I, tell, okay. I tell everybody, like, I was in my room alone when I was, like, 15. Uh, I took a, a tab, and uh, I was playing Mike Tyson punch out on my waterbed. And I was listening to... This is a true story. And I was, and I was listening to um, Qbert's mixtape, uh, Pumpkin Squeeze Music. Is that the one? The With the brakes? Pumpkin Squeeze Music. Yeah. So, it was intense as fuck. And... It was the most amazing experience of my life. And the next morning I woke up and I was just like, I'm gonna become a scratch DJ. Okay. So, Thank you. you know, um, I'm not telling the kids to do drugs. I'm saying though, okay. it could help. <laughs> but not, 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 not man-made shit. Well, a tab was man-made, fuck. Uh, well, you know, don't listen to me. Just follow your own shit and like, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, second question. Um, since C to C, I think C to C pushed some boundaries too. Yeah. So um, you can hear them in a Zalando um, commercial on TV. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, turntablism, maybe in, in groups, uh, um, become pop music someday? I hope so. <laughs> I want to be like Geta. <laughs> I want to. I want to be flying private jets everywhere I go. Um, yeah. I hope it does. It has the potential to, like, you know, I, I, the reaction that I get when I do routines now, like, I stopped doing routines for a long time because, you know, I was doing a lot of clubs and people really don't like to hear that shit at clubs. And it was, you know, I was getting that vibe of like, oh man, the people that come watch me just want to stand there and like, you know, look at, look at my, my shit and just not move, not dance, not have a good time. But like, I think it's coming back to where like people like seeing it but not like a whole hour of it. You know, they like seeing like maybe five minutes of it at the end of the show. And people really fucking bug out now when they see that shit. So I think people like it again. I'm, I don't know, maybe. Maybe people are looking for something different again. So I think C2C is a great group and... Um, That's a great example. C2C, yeah. Birdie Nam Nam. Yeah. You know, people like, uh, what's his face? Uh, Woody, you know, when he starts playing that shit like an instrument. These people are like very musical and, and it, it, it sounds good to the ear. It's not just it's not all just crazy shit. So, yeah, I hope it gets popular. That's the dream. Thank you. Jets and mansions. Cool. Thanks for that, man. We got, we yeah. got one more guy back there. Is it, is oh, it one guy more guy here. Booga? Back in the day when you were when you were learning turntablism, how would you practice and who what would you listen to? How would how would you approach practicing? Okay. Hmm. Well, back in the days, I'm old as fuck. So back in the days, we had VHS. So like we would have, you know, put them put that shit in there, watch the routine, rewind, watch it, rewind, slow mo, watch it, rewind, slow mo, watch it, rewind, and do that all day. And that's how I would learn how to scratch. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have none of that. So that's how I would practice. All right. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna bring in some more people and have the um, the round table.